Hello guys, it is Rick Road here, and today is the first edition of the Roadcast, and I am extremely pumped for this. This is this should be great. Um, never really done anything like this before, at least the way I'm doing it. Uh, the way I used to do it was a lot easier than the way I'm doing it currently, but I mean, it's alright. I used to do like the Wrestling Rage podcast, for those of you that don't know, and that was pretty much just where I talked and, you know, said some stuff. Um, <laughs> just talk to so the same kind of stuff I'll be talking about here. Um, except I used to do that on a laptop, but, uh, my laptop isn't downstairs. I don't bring my laptop downstairs. It's a expensive laptop and the last laptop, it's not the same laptop as before. I had a laptop before, which is where I did the podcast at. that one broke probably because of all the travel. I took it upstairs, downstairs a lot, took it to friends houses sometimes, you know, not, not good. Just ended up breaking. This is an expensive laptop. It's a touch screen. It's really decent. And I'm just going to keep it upstairs to make sure it doesn't get broken. Simple as that. The way I'm recording this is actually really weird. I'm recording with my phone. I've never actually recorded any audio with my phone before. I'm like, put it on the internet. But I'm doing it today. So on my phone, I'm wearing a... Well, it is with my phone. Like I'm, The recording is going to my phone. And once it's on my phone, it'll go to my computer upstairs. And then it will go to editing, I guess, <laughs> and it will go to YouTube. Um, but I'm actually using, like, a headset. It's a Turtle Beach headset. Turtle Beach is supposed to be the best. I'm not sure how the audio is. I'm not sure if it's loud. I'm not sure if, sure if it's uh, quiet. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to get right into this, um, right into the roadcast. And the first thing I want to talk about on the roadcast is what the what is the roadcast? You know, like, what is it? The roadcast is sort of like things and stuff. If you're a fan of my channel, you'll know what I'm talking about. My things and stuff is pretty much where I just, you know, I talk on about stuff. Now, I like this more than I like things and stuff because things and stuff, um... It was kind of just, I just blabbed on about nothing, which I'm going to do a bit on this show, I'm not going to lie, but the things and stuff never had any kind of script, any kind of like outline. I have a script slash an outline on my phone, I am looking at it right now, and the first thing on it is what is the roadcast, obviously, because that's what I wanted to talk about, and I'm pretty much just getting it out there what the roadcast is, and um, as I said, it's just pretty much things and stuff with a script. And not everything I'm saying is scripted, obviously, because why the fuck would I do that? It takes away the entire purpose um, of doing a video, pretty much. Might as well just, you know, write a document, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean, you know? I just, I like doing this kind of thing, because really, I just get to sit on my ass. You guys can't see me. <laughs> um, no, nah, I'm joking about that second part. You guys are probably jealous they don't get to see me now. No, obviously not, but I mean... Anyway... So that's pretty much what the roadcast is. It's going to be me talking. Um, I'm going to have different segments on the show. Like one is going to be called Breaking Kayfabe. Um, and that is going to be where I interview other wrestlers or some anything like that. I just talked to somebody about wrestling. I can announce that Breaking Kayfabe is not going to happen on the first episode of the roadcast. We are going to try to make it happen on the second episode, but I'm not entirely sure how that's going to work. I want to bring... Ryan McMahon on the show, he wants to come on the show, he made a video, he pretty much said, guys, share it around, in the, like, in, in, uh, to get me on the roadcast, and, you know, the fact that he made that video, and, uh, like, alone, that just makes me want to put him on the roadcast, because that's, that's cool, you know, like, if he wants to be on the roadcast, then I'll put him on the roadcast, you know, um, probably it's like 10, 15, possibly 20 minute segment, just talking, um, about wrestling, obviously. Uh, he wrestles for KWA, which is Knockout Wrestling Association, I believe. I know one time I said it wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's Knockout Wrestling. I'm hoping it's Knockout Wrestling Association. I might be wrong. If I am, I am sorry. Um, <laughs> but 
But anyway, he'll be on the podcast next week. The Roadcast, not the podcast. Well, Roadcast is a podcast just hosted by Road. Roadcast sounds cool, so that's what it's called. Um, if I'm wrong, I'm sure he'll tell me in the interview. If we even have the interview, because the thing is, I'm doing this by a headset, and I'm not really entirely sure how we would get him talking uh, in here. I'm not sure how we'd get his audio, but we'll, we'll try to find a way. And if we can't, if it's impossible, then we won't have him on. But we're going to try our hardest, I can say that much. All right, so the breaking kayfabe, I told you about that. What else is on the list? I think it's time for a little bit of a story time. Um, actually, I don't know if I should talk about, I, should, I don't know if I should tell the story, or if I should talk about Raw and SmackDown first. You know what, I'm gonna get the smaller stuff out of the way, I'm gonna talk about Raw and SmackDown first. I've ever made videos reviewing Raw and SmackDown. If you haven't seen them, go watch them, if you want to. Um, I'm just gonna, like, review, like, the biggest parts of Raw and SmackDown. On Raw, uh, a lot of stuff regarding Roman Reigns, Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins, Rusev. Two rivalries mixed in one. Roman Reigns is fighting Rusev. Kevin Owens is fighting uh, Seth Rollins. That sort of thing. Um, that happened. The main event of the night was Roman Reigns versus Kevin Owens in a steel cage match. Uh, Roman Reigns won. Seth Rollins dived off the cage. That was insane. Um, another big thing that happened on Raw was Brian Kendrick defeated Graham Metallic, Cedric Alexander, and which swan to become the number one contender for the WWE Cruiserweight Championship. I'm not sure when that match is going to take place. I'm not sure when the next Raw pay-per-view is, but hopefully soon. That's pretty much it for Raw. I guess, uh, Cesaro and Sheamus, actually, they had a match, and, um, the winner of that match was Cesaro. And now, in their best of seven series, it is 3-3. The winner of the entire series will be the winner of their match at Clash of Champions. I'm not sure when Clash of Champions is. Uh, is Clash of Champions this Sunday, or is No Mercy this Sunday? I am not entirely sure. Um, <laughs> I honestly have no idea. Um, I, I was going to predict one of them on this show, but I haven't even written a script for that yet. I might just have to go on the app, like, mid-record to go see what the matches are. I think Clash of Champions is this Sunday. Um, and it's weird how I totally forgot about that, because I was going to do predictions for it on this on this roadcast. I can announce one thing, and that's that I will be doing the predictions on this roadcast in a bit, after I tell my story, presumably. Um, but now SmackDown. Uh, Alexa Bliss and Becky Lynch had their contract signing. Um, battle happened. The Usos became the, wrong, the number one contender for the Tag Team Champions. The Miz and Dolph Ziggler blew the roof off the house in a match. The Miz won uh, via shenanigans. They always blow the, house, the, blow the roof off the house. They're really good at that. And the main event of the evening was Dean Ambrose versus John Cena. Dean Ambrose won going into their triple threat at No Mercy. That was Ron SmackDown. Um... As I said, you guys should just go watch the full reviews, because I probably didn't do them justice, but... Anyways. I am actually going to go on the WWE app right now. <laughs> I can't... I feel very unprofessional on the first episode of the Roadcast, because I didn't know what show um, was this weekend. Um, I'm, I can almost assure you that it's Clash of Champions this weekend. Yeah, you know what? Uh, it is Clash of Champions this weekend. If I can find it on this app, which this app is hard to control, I can say that much. I'm just going to have to search it because I cannot find it. But anyway, as I was saying, I will be reviewing, uh, not reviewing, but um, predicting, sorry, geez. Um, I will be predicting it, obviously. It is September the 25th, which is this weekend. Yes, this Sunday. Um, oh my god, it brought me to the damn ticket page. I don't want tickets for the event, because why the hell would I want that? I mean, if I could go, I mean, that wouldn't be bad, but what the hell? Um, this app is extremely hard to fucking maneuver. Um, if I would have fucking remembered, I would have just taken a picture on my phone, looked at the picture, and saw the matches, or... 
fucking written a damn script. Something like that, my god. Um, I'm seeing a little articles here about each individual match, but I mean, I just want to find the whole event page. Is that not possible, or what? Because <sighs> if I don't find the actual event page, then I won't be able to... I'll probably, you know, miss a few matches, and I don't want that to happen. Uh, this is annoying. Yeah, I don't like this at all. It's extremely hard to maneuver. Uh, find yourself. Um... Wow, this freaking app. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna have to go Google it then. Because fucking nothing else seems to want to work. So. WWE Clash of Champions 2016 match card. Click that. Hopefully this is the actual match card. Hopefully it works for me. Alrighty. Maybe this is gonna work. You can go to the bottom, because for some reason, they have the big match on top. Alright! Clash of Champions predictions. Clash of Champions is this Sunday. I'm so sorry for not knowing that at the beginning of this roadcast. But, now I know. And now I know all the matches. First match of the night. Kickoff match. Alicia Fox versus Nia Jax. Wow. Nia Jax versus Alicia Fox. Who would have thought? Match of the year. Fight forever. No. 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 Listen. I don't care about Alicia Fox. I don't care about Nia Jax. Alicia Fox hasn't been on TV in months. Nia Jax defeats everybody she's ever fought in her life. In the, on the main roster. And I don't think it's going to be any different at the pay-per-view. I believe Nia Jax will be winning this match. And that's it. <laughs> Next, Sami Zayn versus Chris Jericho. Two Canadians that are very talented in the ring. Um, the partner of Kevin Owens and the rival of Kevin Owens going one-on-one. -on -one. Who do I think is going to win? Holy crap. This should be a very good match. I can, ex I can say that much. Probably one of the best matches on the card. Matches on the card, sorry. One of the best matches on the card. I honestly hope they go with Sami Zayn on this one, because I feel like he needs this win more than Jericho does, because Jericho is a part-timer. He's here to put people over, and he's just put Sami Zayn over. It's his job, you know? That's what he should do. Um, not saying I don't like Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho is, I say, second best of all time, right behind Shawn Michaels, and that means a lot. Chris Jericho is one of the best wrestlers of all time, but I do feel like Sami Zayn should get the win here. Next, Cruiserweight Championship match between TJ Perkins and Brian Kendrick. Whew. Two of the greatest high flyers in the game today. TJ Perkins and Brian freaking Kendrick. Or should I say, the Brian freaking Kendrick. The man with the plan versus the Filipino sensation. I don't think he actually uses that nickname. But you get the point. Holy crap. I am looking forward to this match. This will also be one of the matches of the night. And listen. I'm going to say something before I continue. You'll hear me saying a lot about possible matches of the night for Raw's pay-per-views. Yet, on the SmackDown pay-per-views, I don't usually say that. That's, you know, that should say something right there. I, um, I'm kind of just trying to get the point across that I really... I'm not... I'm not... I don't like SmackDown. Everybody else loves SmackDown. They think SmackDown is better than Raw. What the hell are you smoking? SmackDown is like... It's worse, honestly. Like This past episode of Raw might not have been the best episode of Raw, but it was still better than this week's episode of SmackDown. Like, that's just my opinion. But anyway, let's continue with the predictions. As a TJ Perkins versus Brian Kendrick. Very good match. Who do I think is going to win? TJ Perkins, uh, no doubt. Brian Kendrick... He would be a great cruiserweight champion eventually, but uh, TJ Perkins just won the belt, and if they make him lose it, they're kind of, you know, jobbing him a little bit. 
making him lose on his first night, and they won't do that. I know they won't do that. It just wouldn't make any sense. Next match on the card. The final match in the Best of Seven series. Sheamus versus Cesaro. I'll be honest. The Best of Seven series is actually kind of um, entertaining me. It's kind of surprising me. Uh, I did not see this being as good as it has been, but it's actually been decent. They've been putting on some good matches. Um, you know, I've actually seen a lot of the Sheamus in this uh, feud, and you know, maybe maybe I respect Sheamus a bit more. Actually, you never like I don't know. Like he's he's been doing pretty good. These matches have been pretty good. Maybe is. It's not my top 10, but I'm trying to... What I'm trying to say is that Sheamus has really impressed me as of late. And Cesaro always impressed me. Cesaro is one of the best wrestlers in the world today. And I honestly think Cesaro will come up with the win. I think he will pull off the win in this match and win the entire series. I've been calling that for pretty much the past month now. That Sheamus would win the first three matches and Cesaro would win the final four. That's how I've seen it. And that's how I think it's going to happen. I stand by that opinion. Next, the Tag Team Championship match between The New Day and The Club. Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. New Day have held the belts for 13 months. I know I shouldn't have said 13, but you get the point. They've held the belts for 13 months. They've held the belts for over a goddamn year. That is, that is insane. I am shocked. New Day, very good tag team, very entertaining tag team. The Club... They have their moments, but I'm not sure if they can win the match. I'm not sure if they can, you know, come out the new tag team champions. I don't see WWE doing it. Um, that's the main reason I don't. I can't really see them winning because I don't see WWE doing it. I don't see the New Day dropping the belts to the club. However, if I was in Vince McMahon's shoes. Actually, I don't know if I'd make him drop him to the club. At least not right now. I don't feel like Clash of Champions is a time for the New Day to drop their belts. But you never know in WWE. I'm not sure who to go with here. You know, I'm thinking, like, you know, New Day, New Day, New Day, but... I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. Um... And for those of you who don't, who, who don't know and who haven't heard, there has been rumors going around the internet that Gallows and Anderson are actually gonna win the belts. Um, can't believe the internet though, you cannot believe the internet. But there have been some rumors going around, so... I'm not sure. Um... I, I'm not going to base my votes just on the rumors, because that, no, don't do that. But, I'm really not sure to go with in this match, honestly. Because the club, they're really good tag team, but they have been really underutilized, I guess is a way to say it. Um, they have not been treated as they should. They were one of the, they were the bullet club for fuck's sakes. The biggest thing in wrestling for a while. The bullet club. At least Japanese wrestling, like, you know, like, you, even if you don't watch Japanese wrestling, like, I don't watch it. I don't watch Japanese wrestling. The only wrestling I really watch is the WWE. I know that's kind of sad and kind of pathetic, but it's the only stuff I really can watch. I don't really, you know, I'm not just going to go off and pay for some other kind of network to see wrestling. Like, I'm a huge wrestling fan, and I would do it, but I mean, it's not up to me. But anyway, if you guys, even if you haven't watched Japanese wrestling ever you have heard of the bullet club they have taken over the indies they are great well they were great they're not really the club anymore now they're kind of like they're not the bullet club anymore now they're kind of called the elite and it's really just like kenny omega and the young bucks it's not really as good although kenny omega and the young bucks are extremely good i mean like finn baller was in the goddamn club at one point aj styles like you know two WWE superstars you know that kind of thing like it's not, I feel like, you know, it doesn't matter. I don't care about the club. I'm not going to keep dragging this on, dragging this on. As I'm just going to say that the club were one of the best things going in independent wrestling for quite a while. And I feel like they're being underutilized in the WWE. With that said, do I think they're going to be winning the belts? No. 
I feel like the New Day are going to retain. I might regret saying that, but I feel like the New Day is going to retain. Next, the Women's Championship match. The Women's Championship Triple Threat match, actually. Between Charlotte, Sasha Banks, and Bayley. I hate be seeing Charlotte as the champion. I hate Charlotte so much. Bailey and Sasha, both amazing athletes. I thought Sasha had some back injuries, and I thought she was going to be leaving for a bit. I thought that's why she dropped the belt to Charlotte, but apparently that's not what it was. Apparently she just dropped it for, you know, dropping it, I guess. She just dropped it. There was no real reason behind it, and that's just what they wanted to do. And with that, I don't know. I don't, I don't know why they gave the belt back to Charlotte, because I feel like now they're just going to make her hold it for a while. Or they're not going to make her hold it for long at all. I, I don't know I don't know what they're going to be doing here. Um, I'm not going to go with... I'm just going to go with who I f want to win. I want Sasha Banks to win. I would also wouldn't mind if Bailey won. I don't want Charlotte to win. I don't want her to win whatsoever. Do I feel like she'll lose her belt? It's a possibility, yeah. You know what? I could see it. It's a possibility. So, you know what? Fuck it. I am going with Sasha Banks in this match. I feel like she's going to get her women's title back. Going out on a limb and saying that, but maybe, maybe it'll happen. Next, the United States Championship match between Rusev and Roman Reigns. I don't care about either of these guys, honestly. Uh, I haven't liked Rusev ever. I've never really liked Roman Reigns that much. Um, I'm, I don't even care. Um, I'll say that... I say Roman Reigns is gonna win it, you know? I can kind of see that happening. Um, so I call, I'm calling it right now. Roman Reigns, new... Uh, I was going to say Universal Champion. New United States Champion, Roman Reigns. Next is the main event of the evening. And it's for the Universal Championship. Kevin Owens versus Seth freaking Rollins. I am looking forward to this match so fucking much. Two of my favorites going today. Actually... I say they're number one and number two. <laughs> Kevin Owens being number one. Just saying. I've always liked Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens has actually been my favorite wrestler since his independent wrestling days. Um, nobody ever trumped Kevin Owens. It was always Kevin Owens first. Um, second, uh, I had some seconds, like Dean Ambrose, for example, like close seconds. But Kevin Owens was always my number one no matter what. He is the best wrestler going today. I feel... I'll go on and on and say that. He's the best wrestler going today. Well, Chris Jericho, that's a different story. Like With Chris Jericho, go like he's not as prime anymore, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like Kevin Owens, this this kid's in his prime. You know, not a kid, he's older than me obviously, but you know what I'm trying to say? He's in his prime. These are his gory days. And I think he's the best. I think he is the best wrestler today. Um, you know, like, I'm not saying the best of all time. I'm saying the best today. Of all time, as I said, Shawn Michaels, Chris Jericho. But he's the best going today. And right behind him is Seth Rollins, the architect. And ladies and gentlemen, this match is a dream match for me. I am, um, I am, I'm seriously, like, I'm I'm going insane here. Like, this is gonna be such a good match. I don't know who to pick. <laughs> um, <sighs> I'm going with Kevin Owens. He just won his belt recently. I can't see him losing it yet. Um, either way, very good match. I, but I do feel like Kevin Owens can be the winner of it all. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Clash of Champions. That was my predictions for Clash of Champions. Whole review would be will be coming uh, next Monday. Um, and yeah, whole review of the show coming next Monday. Now, 
I'm not gonna go straight into my story because something happened while I was actually predicting um, Clash of Champions. I don't know how many of you people know what Sub Pop Records is, um, or the band Tad for that matter. Um, there's a grunge band from the 90s called Tad, and they just, it was just released today that they are gonna be, well, it was just announced today, sorry, that they're gonna be releasing uh, deluxe editions of their albums uh, coming soon. Uh, actually, November 4th, like six days before my birthday. So earlier today, I tweeted, and I fucking quote, ah, uh, fuck, I lost it. <laughs> um, I tweeted, uh, and I quote, holy shit, it's not loading. Okay. Why is it not letting me see? Shit. Now I feel like an idiot because I'm saying, and I quote, even though I can't even find my tweet. <laughs> Anyways, I pretty much just tweeted out that I was extremely excited for their albums coming out, and Sub Pop actually liked the, my post, and they said, "Yikes, you're welcome," because I kind of swore a bit. Okay, actually, I found my found my tweet. These are my exact words. Um, I just shit myself. These are being released a few days before my birthday, so fucking awesome. So Sub Pop says, "Yikes, you're welcome?" Question mark. I love this. This is great. Um, Tad is one of my favorite bands of all time, and new albums are coming. Well, same albums that they had before, but they're just like deluxe editions and real releases. So they're going to be easier to buy, pretty much. Um, so anyways, not, that was not <laughs> wrestling related, but I mean, I just figured that I'd say that, because, you know, it happened, and I'm kind of psyched. Alright, story time! Story time, I've been hyping this up the whole goddamn show, and I'm finally gonna talk about it. The story time today is about the time I met Eric Bischoff! Yes, the time I met the creator of the Illumination Chamber, the time I met public enemy number one in the eyes of WWE in the 90s, the time I met the man, the myth, the legend... Eric Bischoff. So, it's 2010. And I was actually at Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida. My mother used to work for that company as a call, uh, as like a call agent person. Uh, somebody who takes calls and takes reservations for people that are going to Universal. So, we got, um, you know, we got the chance to go to Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida, which was very, very awesome. And while I was there, um, me my, and my father went to go see TNA Impact Wrestling. Um, those were the, I'd say the glory days of TNA. <laughs> um, maybe not the glory days, but the good days of TNA. They had AJ Styles, they had Jeff Hardy, they had Kurt Angle. They had tons of amazing athletes, tons of them. Now they're kind of stuck with Brother Nero, Broken Matt Hardy, Decay. Uh, Eli Drake, I think he's there. I don't even know who the fuck that is, but anyways, what I'm trying to say is they had the names back then, <laughs> and actually one of the names was their uh, general manager, was it? Hulk Hogan. Now, for those of you that don't know, Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff are close friends, apparently. That was news to me in 2010, but they were close friends. And it just so happened they were staying in the same hotel I was. The Hard Rock Hotel. So, it was just a random day. It was just a day that we were there. We were there for a week. And we decided we are going to go down to the pool. Because it was fucking hot as hell. Like, it is in uh, Florida. It was also, probably started raining later on that day. Because that's also what happens in Florida. But, that's besides the point. So, we take the elevator to go down to the pool. And uh, there was a few people in the elevator before uh, me and my family got in. Um, one of which got off. One of which stayed on. I think he was going down, not to the pool, but to like, uh, just down to the bottom floor. Which was the same, uh, the same floor as the pool. And, you know, after the first, there's two people on before my family got on. One of which got off on the second floor. One of which got off on the same floor that we were getting off on. So... Once the first person gets off, I kind of like, I kind of like looked over to the guy, that to the guy that was beside me, 
And he was wearing a leather jacket. He was wearing jeans. And I look up. He has like white hair and he has like scruffy little like little five o'clock shadow. And I look at his face. Like I kind of like you know like I lean in a bit to see his face and I'm like, holy fuck! Like I'm thinking to my thinking to myself like, is that Eric Bischoff? Like holy shit! There's no way that's Eric Bischoff. So, I I kind of like look again. And I'm like, holy shit! That's Eric Bischoff. Holy fuck! And I kind of build up the courage and I you know like I kind of like tap his shoulder a little bit I'm like are you Eric Bischoff it's like yeah 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 man <laughs> and like he started talking to my dad and me and I was like oh my god that's Eric fucking Bischoff oh my god that is fucking insane I shook his hand and oh my god like, I fucking bet Eric Bischoff in a fucking elevator how many other people could say they met eric bischoff in an elevator huh not that many um i really like eric bischoff i always have he was you know kind of a historical figure in wrestling maybe i guess you could say that um you know wcw wwe slash f tna he was everywhere he's done everything created the elimination chamber huge part of the monday night wars holy fuck Man's a legend, I tell you. And I met him in a fucking elevator. It's great. Um, so that's my story about meeting Eric Bischoff. Now, I've met tons of other wrestlers, and I might do stories about them on the roadcast. I actually think I'm going to be doing one next week about Tony Atlas, the time I met Tony Atlas. But until then, that was, you know, my superstar meeting story, I guess is what I could call it. Next... Holy fuck, is this the last thing? Shit, this is the last thing I've written down. I don't know if this should be like the main event or not. Oh, it might be, I guess. Kind of just the last thing on the roadcast. This is the end. How long have we been going here? We've been going for 30 minutes. That's not bad. That's kind of how long I was hoping the roadcast would be. I'm already at like 32 minutes. So that's great. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is XWF. Um... For those of you that don't know what XWF is, it's um, a backyard wrestling company owned by me. <laughs> have, haven't you heard of it? <laughs> um, anyways, for those of you that have been following XWF, you would know that I injured my knee recently. And I found out that I uh, slightly, I don't think I tore my uh, ACL, but I, I didn't tear it completely. But I slightly tore it, and I'm going to need to be recovering it. Um, you know, going through some rehab with it, you know, like that sort of thing. Like exercising it a lot, which I have been for the past few days. And I have to wear a knee brace on it pretty much at all times for a while. So that's what I've been doing. But, ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you this much. I am cleared to wrestle. Uh, I postponed Pain for Pride uh, when I announced my injury. And now I can tell you that I have an official date of Pain for Pride. That date would be October 9th, 2016. XWF takes over. XWF begins, I guess you could say, with Pain for Pride. On the card, me and Aaron Gregory, one-on-one, -on -one, winner becomes president of XWF. Because he wanted the match, I decided to give it to him, you know? He finally gets his match. The winner... Of the match will be new president of XWF. And oh yeah, did I forget to say? It's a three stages of hell match. That's right, three fucking stages of hell. I can tell you all the stages right now. Those stages are a normal match, a submission match, and last but not least, an XWF styled Iron Man match. That's right, Iron Man match, 30 minutes, actually. I was going to say 30 minutes long, because that's how we were originally going to do it. But this isn't a regular Iron Man match. This is an XWF-styled Iron Man match. There's a huge difference. Now, the XWF-styled Iron Man match isn't called an XWF-styled Iron Man match. Well, that's one name for it, but the main name for it is called a Fallout match, because, you know, that's that's what we call it. 
And what a Fallout match is, is it's instead of getting uh, any amount of points in a, any amount of points in a certain amount of time, it's about getting a certain amount of points in any amount of time. You can get a point by pinfall, submission, or count out. There is no disqualifications, no holds barred. Simple as that. Not count out. Uh, sorry, not count out like outside the ring. Um, if you're down for the 10 count, you know, that's a point for your opponent. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that is XW of Pain for Pride coming October 9th, Sunday, October 9th. You guys should tune in. It's going to be fucking awesome. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I guess that just about wraps up the show. So, for those of you who don't know, I am Rick Road. This is the first edition of the Roadcast. And before I sign out, please remember to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe for more. I am Rick Road. Signing out.